Today we're going to be taking a look at building a $750 gaming PC in the current PC building climate. I know that GPUs are obviously out of whack when it comes to the prices that we're expecting, but that's par for the course everywhere. And in case you're looking to build a PC right now, I have a few options for you. We're going to be basing one on Intel, one on AMD, and I'm going to be giving you a couple of options that you can change up with either one. We're not necessarily going to be looking at once in a lifetime deals here, but rather things that are currently on the market that you can just pick up on Amazon using our affiliate link that's in the video description. But before we jump into that, I just wanna say thank you for partnering our mess as we get everything set up here for UFD Tech 5.0 in Pennsylvania. This is not the permanent set. This is just what I could whip together so I could get a UFD Tech video out to you guys as soon as possible. So thank you so much for bearing with us. More is coming. The set's gonna be cool. We're just really working on it. You wanna see our first like initial set design, go check out our hot news channel where we've like actually got that completely done. It's just that stuff shipping has taken a little bit longer. So instead of taking a little bit longer to get to the point of this video, let's dive into the Intel build first. Again, we're targeting that price point of $750. That's including the CPU, the GPU, and everything else that you could potentially want in your PC setup. We don't include the cost of Windows because Microsoft doesn't force you to pay for it in the first place. You just download an ISO from their website, slot it in, and it just gives you a little watermark. You can deal with it. And when all said and done, you're gonna be able to target 1080p 60 FPS gaming with everything that's in this system, which is a little lower than you could have expected from a year ago. You probably would have been in the 1440p region, but again, we have to deal with the times as they are. So starting off with the CPU, we're gonna go with the i5-10400F. This is a generation behind, but 10th gen Intel, honestly not that far behind when it comes to IPC. This will do you good for gaming, comes in at $179. And we're gonna start color scheming this boy. We're gonna go for a black and white build with the Vitru V5 white cooler, gonna be our cooler of choice, coming in at roughly $28. The i5-10400F does include a stock cooler, but there's plenty of benchmarks showing out there that it's it, like it'll work, but it's not quite enough for Intel stuff. So picking up the Vitru V5 will help us out a lot. For the motherboard, we're going with this Asus Prime B560M. This is a micro ATX motherboard, so in case you're looking to replicate this build, just keep that in mind. You don't wanna go with a mini ITX case or anything like that, this is gonna cost us $110. For the RAM, we can get 16 gigs here. We're gonna go with this Oloy kit for $75, which is 3000 megahertz. You don't need much faster on Intel. It doesn't make a huge difference. Again, 16 gigs DDR4 3000 CL16. 500 gig SSD is what's up next. It's a 980, not a 980 Pro from Samsung going for $60. I always like making sure that the SSD is something that you spend a good chunk of money on, especially since this is something that can transit from one system to the next. You can upgrade the CPU, you can upgrade the GPU, but an SSD tends to stick around. Just go talk to your friends who've been building PCs for the past seven years and ask them how many different hard drives do they have from six years ago. It's a lie. Unfortunately, I couldn't squeeze a terabyte in here, but 500 gigabytes is enough, personally, in my opinion, to be able to install the games you want, but have to do a little management like once every month or so, just to make sure that you're not necessarily running out of space. For the case, to complement that black and white aesthetic that we're going for, that RAM falls into the black side of things, this case falls into the white side of things. It's the Moraval Micro ATX case. It comes with two RGB fans up front. It's mesh, so the airflow should actually be pretty decent. And it's got all of the features that you want, including a tempered glass side panel, so you can see everything that's going in on the side. But since it doesn't actually have an exhaust fan, just those RGB fans on the front, we're gonna keep going with that black and white aesthetic and add in this arc F12 120 millimeter exhaust fan should just slot into the back. It's gonna cost us six bucks, but it's gonna to help to complement that color scheme and make it work overall. For the power supply, again, we're kind of spending a little bit more than we probably otherwise could. Here's an EVGA Supernova 550G3. It's 80 plus gold, fully modular. They did just put the 650 GT on sale for $50, so you can save like 30 bucks by picking that one up, get extra power, it's slightly better as a power supply. So I'd recommend just making sure you're checking the deals when you're building your PC, but either one will do you well. We'll have links to both of them down below. So right now that's putting us in the $600 range for the PC, which means now we need to decide what $150 GPU can we get. And this is where everything just gets really difficult because you can pop on Amazon. You're not really gonna find much that's actually on in stock new right now. Newegg likewise won't have that for you either. They did, however, just release a combo where 
where you could get a 450 watt Asus Tough power supply and a GTX 1650 with that, which isn't terrible at $300 because it is in stock and it is brand new, but we're not considering that right now. We're going on the used market and I'm going to suggest a GTX 970. If you look at a lot of the listings for the GTX 970, you're gonna see that they're sitting in the $200 region. However, if you scroll down to the sold section of eBay or Macari, you're gonna see that they regularly are going below 150 if you can find a seller who isn't necessarily trying to squeeze every single dollar out of his card. The GPU is gonna be the hardest part to find. It's going to be the one that requires the most patience, but if you just stay vigilant on Macari, on OfferUp, on Facebook Marketplace, on eBay, you're going to find a deal at some point, $150. Prices do seem like they're dropping down. A GTX 970, as I mentioned, will get you in that roughly 1080p, 60 FPS region. So that puts us in the total cost of $749.65. You can see if you spend even more, a little bit more than $150 on that GPU, you're out of that $750 budget that we set at the beginning. But have no fear, there are a few tweaks that you can make to potentially up that GPU. And here are the recommendations I would make in case you wanna change a few things. Number one, instead of buying a brand new i5-10400F, just scroll on down to Amazon Warehouse and get one for $150. CPUs don't tend to degrade very much, likely isn't gonna be mined on, so you're not really worried about too much going wrong with a used Amazon Warehouse deal. So saving $28 right there is gonna help you out a lot. Number two, this is probably the bigger sacrifice. Don't buy a CPU cooler, just go with the one that's included in the box. That's gonna save you again another $28. We're down $56, which now we can tack on to our GPU budget, which at that point I would recommend potentially looking into getting a GTX 1060 six gigabyte card. Again, this is another one of those instances where if you're looking on just what people are listing their cards for, it's going for 250 roughly right now, a 1066 gig. However, if you just wait, if you're patient, I've seen several going for that 190 to $200 region. I just picked up a 1060 myself on Macari yesterday for $190, so it can be done. Again, it's just gonna require patience. If you subtract the power supply from this build, you wanna add on that new egg combo that's gonna put you slightly over 750. You can make a couple compromises and things like downgrading the RAM even more to something like eight gigabytes in order to get a GTX 1650 right now, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad deal, but I think I'd rather have the more complete system and then upgrade when the GPU market recovers like it's looking like it's going to do in the next few months. Now that we've got the Intel build behind us on our backs, I wanna tell you about today's video sponsor, Chirp and their Wheel Plus, which you can use to actually stretch out your back. It's the simplest back relief solution on the market. The Chirp wheel is amazing. We've been having them as a sponsor over on Hot News for a while. It's been one of our most popular sponsors and it's just because it's so simple, it's so intuitive, and it makes a lot of sense for back relief. It's an FDA registered class one medical device. You just roll this on your back with its unique four-way stretch. It has the spinal canal that actually makes sure that it gets in there and starts loosening up the muscles. It can support up to 500 pounds and they have different sizes from the large to the medium to the deep tissue, which can obviously get different areas of stretching depending on how you need it. And in case you have an HSA savings account, it is approved for you to use that because it, again, is an FDA registered class one medical device. So in case you're interested in checking out the Chirp Wheel Plus for stretching out your back, I use it every single day. Day. The link for it will be in the video description. Big thanks to Chirp and their Wheel Plus for sponsoring today's video. Now let's talk about the AMD build. What would you build if you're going team red? Personally, I went with Intel first in this video because I think that's a better system than what I'm gonna recommend for the AMD side of things. But we're gonna start off with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF CPU. It's currently going for $150 right now on Amazon, which is a far cry from the days where it was $85 you could just pick it up. This is equivalent to a Ryzen 5 2600 because they changed the process of it. So it's not a 1600, it's rather a 2600 with a 1600 marking. And for this color scheme, we're gonna be going for black and red to complement that AMD aesthetic. So the CPU cooler that we're gonna go with is the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports. It's gonna cost us $38, but it's gonna hit that black and red color scheme oh so good. For the motherboard, we're going with the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This is gonna be a good enough motherboard in case you wanna upgrade to Ryzen 3000. 
2000 a little bit later down the line. And it's a solid price point at roughly $90 right now. For the RAM, we're gonna go with the Silicon Power 16 gigabyte kit, 3200 megahertz, hitting that black and red aesthetic again, only gonna set us back roughly $74. SSD staying the same at $65, it's that Samsung 980 500 gig. Power supply, again, also staying the same, the Supernova 550 G3, but potentially consider you can hit up that 650 GT and potentially drop down that price point to have a $30 extra budget in your total spend. The case, we're staying on the airflow side of things because I don't necessarily want to get into the tempered glass setup right now. $95 for this Corsair 4000D. It's a little bit more pricey than you can typically get in this like mid tower setup, but I'm thinking that this is not the end of your system. If you're spending $750 right now, you need to build a PC. This will do you well. That case is gonna last you a while. The airflow is gonna make it so that you don't necessarily have to worry about what components are going in it in the future. This is slightly future-proofing. $95 is a tough pill to swallow, but when the CPU and the motherboard are cheaper, it makes it a little bit easier to spend that money. And then that, again, puts us in the GPU region of a GTX 970 for about $150. The total spend on this is $749.27 as I've priced it out on Amazon and eBay. Again, if you wanna change things up, you could save around $38 on that Arctic freezer cooler. Just go with the stock one on AMD. That's a better bet than it is on Intel because AMD stock coolers are better than Intel's. You can save that $30 on that AVGA power supply. So right there, you're down around 80 bucks. You tack that onto the GPU price point and you're back in that GTX 1060 region with maybe a little bit extra money to spare. And you could also downgrade the case to something that's less airflowy. Go with something like the NZ ZXT H510, which is gonna cost you around 70 bucks, and that's gonna add, get you in that $250 region, which is starting to put you in that GTX 1650, 1650 Super region. I just picked up a 1650 Super for just under $300 on Macari. So again, GPU hunting is gonna be the name of the game to hit these price points, but the rest of the system is actually really well-rounded. You're getting mid-tier Intel, you're getting mid-tier AMD, you're getting decent systems. I do think that the 10400 F is probably a better bet than the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. That's just me personally. I think the Intel system is a bit more well-rounded, but let me know what you think of these builds down below in the comments. Which one would you build? Have you been eyeing the market? I wanna hear from you. Why don't you go ahead and check out the previous video we did, which explains why I'm in a basement, what the move's been going on like with UFD Tech and why UFD Tech is now in its fifth stage. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video, my friends. Cheers. Thank you.